In this training video, we're going to look at the use of mixed cell referencing. And this really means using dollar signs in formulas. So I'm going to create a formula in cell G6. We're going to increase the salary of the employee in row 6 by 25%. And I want to use this salary then to look at potential increases from 25% to 50% for all employees. So I want to use the one formula to, in effect, copy through the whole grid. So I'm going to complete the formula first. So we're going to be equals the 35,000 in E6. And I'm going to increase it. So I'm going to plus it. I'm going to open the bracket. And I'm going to say the salary again, multiplied by the 25%. Close bracket. So what this is doing is saying E6, which is the 35,000, plus E6 multiplied by G5 means 25% of 35,000. So it's going to say 35,000 plus 25% of 35,000. And then enter. So there's a 25% increase on 35,000 gives the salary. Now, we could be using this grid to see what we could afford, maybe to give staff increases if we could afford it. Now, if you look at the last cell that I got highlighted, the yellow cell, that is in effect 70,000 because it's the last salary and it's a 50% increase. Now, when I'm doing this and I'm trying to complete a grid where I'm trying to use this formula to copy throughout the grid, this entire grid, I always look at the last cell to think, well, what do I want the last result to be? So the last result in this case, I've shaded yellow formatting. Well, that in effect should be a 70,000 salary increased by 50%. So if you do the maths of that, 70,000, take half of it, that's 35,000, it should be 105,000. So let's do the test calculation. So equals 70,000 in the E22 plus the E22 again multiplied by the 50% and close bracket. So there's the 105,000. So that's what I want to be expecting to see in the yellow cell because that would be a 70%, 70,000 increased at 50%. So that's what we're trying to achieve. Now, when you look at this formula, if you don't use dollar signs, so the best way of learning how to apply the dollar signs is to see what goes wrong if you don't use dollar signs. So you, we can see the formula has no dollars in it right now. So if I copy across, now that's gone down to zero. Well, if a 25% increase of 35,000 is, is, is 43,750, 30% increase must go up. Well, that's not the case here. It's gone down. So we've got to try and figure out now what is happening as we're copying across. Well, as we're copying the formula across, it's moving from the column E, where the salaries are, to the column F. Well, column F has got nothing in it. So nothing times 30% gives you nothing. So as we're copying across with no formulas, so across the spreadsheet, we are moving away from the column E. Now, so we've got to stop that happening when we're copying across. So we know now it goes down as we copy across. We cannot let it move from column E when we copy across. When you copy down, hash means the number isn't wide enough, or the column isn't wide enough for the number. But if you look at that number, you're looking at a monstrous number. And if you look at what it's doing, it's looking at, so as you copy down, it's going with the E7, which is fine. So that part's fine when you're copying down. But then it's coming away from the G25, or the G5, which is the 25%. And it's actually looking at G6. So what it's doing, it's saying so E7, which is the th which is the thirty-three thousand per salary, plus 
33,000 salary multiplied by 43,700. Well, that's why it's given us a massive, massive number. So we know that's not working. So we know when we're copying down with no dollars, it's now moving from the 25%. So as we're moving down, we cannot let it move off the 25%. So now I've demonstrated what, go, what goes wrong without dollars. We're now gonna fix this. So I'm gonna delete and delete. So if we look at the E column, now the E column for the E6 is very, very important for when we're copying across because we cannot let this E column move to F. So going across the screen, the E is extremely important. So that means the E has to be held in place. So if I use the F4, the E, the dollar before the E holds the E6, holds the E part of the E6 in place. If I do it for the one E, I have to do it for the second E. Now the G5, if I look at that part of the formula, the really critical part is the five because I cannot let the row five move to row six and seven as I copy down the column. Otherwise we're gonna get massive, massive numbers again. So again, the five is really, really important here. So when I copy down, I must hold the five. So I want that one. That's the one I want. So the completed formula looks at dollar G6, E6 plus open brackets dollar E6 multiplied by G dollar five close bracket enter. So I haven't changed the formula at all. I've done some dollar sign work and figuring out what's really important. So I know the E is very very important for the E6. And I know the five is very, very important for the G5 side. And that's why I've applied the dollars there. Now I can either copy down first, then across. My mind works across first, then down. So I'm gonna copy across to the 50%. Now leave it all highlighted and now copy straight down to the yellow cell. Let go. And now I can see 105,000 matches so I know the maths is correct of the dollar sign if you look at the 105,000 what's it doing it's kept the E22 so it's kept the E part in place it's kept the E again in place so it's referring to the 70,000 and as we come down it's referring also to the 50% so it's held itself in place with the use of dollars so this is where you can use, for example, mixed reference formulas for scenarios like this, where you might have increases, or you might have all kinds of formulas and spreadsheets with, with data has gone in two different directions, and you might need to use dollars to, make, to use mixed cell referencing formulas. But this completes mixed cell referencing formulas in this example, whereby here we use dollar signs for columns and dollar signs for rows only. So I look at the G6, the column is held for the formula in part for E6, the column is also held for the second E6, and then the row is held for the G5. So this is when dollar signs can be very, very useful and knowing how to apply them and how to think through them. It does take practice, but this completes the training video on mixed cell referencing formulas and using dollar signs in formulas. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. Hope to see you for the next tutorial and thanks for watching.